Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Uh, today, I'll be going over um, hypothesis testing and p-values. So this is part of our statistics, probability and statistics playlist. If you haven't checked out the other parts of the playlist, we strongly suggest you do so, because we will be building off that. Um, and if you're not familiar with um, z-tables, uh, the normal distribution, etc., cetera, uh, we strongly recommend you go check that out first. But if you feel comfortable with that, then uh, we can go into um, today's topic. Uh, so. Something that's very important in statistics is that you want to find out if your hypothesis or claim is true. And in statistics, I've written down the typical hypothesis. So some claim or assumption about a population. For example, uh, the average temperature of this population of creatures' bodies is 98.6 degrees. Or um, the average height of the student body is greater than 5 feet. Something like that. So oftentimes we want to prove that these are true, and we can use statistics to do so. I will be going over the p-value approach to that today, and that can get a little messy sometimes, but there's a lot of software out there to kind of crunch numbers that you need to crunch for you, and it's um, pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Uh, so I have started by also writing what a p-value is, and that is the probability of getting results that are ex as extreme as a sample in question. So say an average height of some population was five feet. Uh, you take five people from there, and all of them are six feet. That's a pretty big difference. So the p-value is going to tell you how likely it is that it is just a mere coincidence that you picked up uh, a few people who are seven feet. Um, and uh, two very important um, terms that come along with the p-test and hypothesis testing are null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. And um, I've written usually, but it's almost always, um, but when you make a null hypothesis, it's something you want to reject. It is basically saying that the simple observations are due to random chance. And if you reject your null hypothesis, then generally um, you're saying that, no, this isn't due to random chance. There's actually um, some kind of cause here. And that's often important to do in the real world. Um, alternate hypothesis uh, denoted H1 instead of H0, um, also usually, but um, almost always. Observations are due to some not random chance. So there is a significant difference between um, these kids who are, five, who are six feet and the rest of the population who is five feet. So. Um, that's uh, a lot of what you need right there. Um, I've added one more uh, level of significance, which I will go more into in the example later. But this is basically the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. And this is inevitably tied with the p-value. Um, you will compare the two after you calculate the p-value, and you'll see um, if you have an acceptable uh, value for the p-value. OK. Uh, so. I will start by writing, if your p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, and generally, you do that in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And uh, the reason why you would do this is because your p-value is measuring a probability that um, your results are just by random chance. And if that's really, really small, if there's a really unlikely chance uh, you get something that extreme, then generally you would accept it as this isn't due to random chance. Um, alpha level of significance, oftentimes it is arbitrary. You can name it. 5% um, is a convention. 10% is a convention. 1% is a convention. Um, generally, those are acceptable. Um, if your p-value um, is less than 1%, then it would be very fair to say um, if there's only a 1% chance of this happening randomly, this was, not, this was very likely not due to random chance. I would reject the null hypothesis, which says it was due to random chance, and I would, um, in favor of this alternate hypothesis, H1. OK. If your p-value is greater than alpha, you do not reject the null hypothesis. Uh, and that is a very similar um, reasoning to before. Um, if your p-value is pretty high, uh, and you randomly set, say, alpha to 10%, if there is a greater than 10% chance that it was due to random, randomness, then generally we can't accept the null, uh, reject the whole null hypothesis um, right then and there. Um, okay. So uh, I'm going to introduce the T statistic, which is very similar. Um, I will call it the t distribution, which is very similar to the z distribution, which I talked about in an early vid earlier video. Um, it is basically the same thing, except it's important in 
um, hypothesis testing because it does take into consideration how many subjects you're taking into place when determining um, uh, t value, which is kind of the equivalent of z value. Um, so. And then kind of just like the z um, statistic, it's um, calculated as so, x bar minus mu divided by standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. Um, so it's very similar, but we use it in terms of samples. So of a population, take a sample 5, um, you could calculate a what's known as a sample uh, t value and such. Okay. I will be going over a pretty quick example, which should hopefully clear this up a bit. Um, so uh, using hypothesis testing and p-values, OK. So on, continent, on some continent somewhere, the average height is 60, 68 inches. Um, and in one random town, um, the people tend to be a little taller. And, uh, and in that town, you take a sample of 10 people. Uh, those 10 people have an average height of 72 inches. And they have a standard deviation of 5 inches. So I'm going to write down everything we know so far. OK, so important to note is that um, your p-value is um, this assumption. And you, um, or is this probability. And you assume that the null hypothesis is true under um, this probability, this p-value. Um, so here we assume that, um, for now, we're assuming that under the null hypothesis that we have h0. That this sample, um, that the mean is actually just, um, the true mean is actually the same as the population. Um, we now construct an alternative hypothesis. Um, and there are three ways you can do that. Um, I will show you all three ways right now, and then I will choose one based on what I think is reasonable. And these are known as um, one or two tail hypothesis, uh, hi, um, one or two tail hypothesis testing. Um, we could say that perhaps um, as an alternative hypothesis to the null hypothesis, perhaps the true sample mean is not actually 68, but in fact is greater than 68. Uh, perhaps it is less than 68. And perhaps it is not equal to 68, meaning it could be less than or greater than 68. Um, so what this would look like uh, coupled with a normal distribution. If you recall our video on z-scores and the normal distribution. Uh, this is kind of the area c probability curves that we are looking at. So saying mu is greater than 60, uh, 68, that would have to do with this part of the normal curve, um, less than with this. And then not equal to is both sides. Uh, so based on what we know, um, that uh, the sample mean is 72, I'm going to go ahead and say it's most, most likely uh, that mu, this true sample mean, is greater than 68. I think that there's something different about this population, uh, which makes it greater or taller than OK, and for my hypothesis testing, I'm going to say an alpha, uh, a level of significance of 0.05 or 5% is perfectly fine. That is something I can arbitrarily name. So I'm saying if there is a less than 5% chance that uh, these people chosen are different uh, by random, then it is acceptable because less than 5% chance is pretty good. So I'm going to start by calculating the t value. to write down n is equal to 10. We had a sample um, size of 10. Uh, so I'm going to calculate this. Um, I got that simply by plugging in the values that we were given uh, into uh, this t. And you get an answer that is roughly 2.53. And for a t uh, sample, it is important to know your degrees of freedom. Uh, that is very easy to calculate. It is simply the number of um, population people you have and minus 1. So degrees of freedom. We get 9. All right, and from this, we can find a p-value. And it is often recommended that you use some kind of software, because in terms of a low sample size, you can't just use a z-table to estimate it. It's generally recommended that you do that. Um, 
And you should get a p-value for this of 0 0.0161, uh, because this is a one-tailed hypothesis test. Um, all right. So that is basically all we need to draw a conclusion. We have a p-value, um, and we note that it is less than uh, our level of significance. Uh, that is really good for us. Um, 0 0.0161 is very low, lower than alpha. Uh, since our p-value is lower, less than or equal to alpha, we then reject the null hypothesis. And conclude that uh, the sample mean for this is indeed different, or very, very, very likely uh, different than the actual uh, mean of the population. And that is how to use um, hypothesis testing uh, with the p-values. It's very, very useful in real life. All right, thank you very much for watching <laughs> our video on hypothesis testing and the p-value. If you would like to see more videos just like this, you can click up here for a probability and statistics playlist. If you would like to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click right here. If you want to visit us on centermath.org, feel free to click here. And if you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the corner up there. They should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching.